Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about trigonometry, primarily about trigonometric identities. A couple of them, and simple actually, but still very necessary, I believe, if you are basically trying to, um, to, to, to study m mathematics in general and trigonometry in particular. Now, um, this particular lecture is part of the course called Math Plus and Problems. This is a continuation of the course called Math for Teens, and uh, it's all presented on unizor.com. All is completely free, um, and uh, I even came up with some kind of a slogan recently. We don't sell knowledge, we share it. Okay, so, um, going back to trigonometry. Um, what's interesting about trigonometry is, um, one of the interesting things, is its relationship to complex numbers. Um, remember how we uh, defined trigonometric functions, well, I would say main trigonometric functions, sine and cosine. We had some kind of a unit circle on, uh, on the plane, and uh, so the radius is equal to 1. Now, any point has basically um, abscissa and ordinate. And ordinate. So if this is angle phi, then this particular piece, which is abscissa, which is x, was cosine of phi, and y was sine of phi. Now, at the same time, complex numbers, which have real and imaginary part, where i is i square is equal to minus 1, imaginary unit, is also represented as a point on the plane where a is abscissa and b is ordinate. So there is some kind of a relationship. And this relationship is perfectly represented by Euler's formula which is e to the power i phi is equal to cosine phi plus i sine phi. Now, this formula is very interesting in one particular aspect. We had no idea what is uh, complex or imaginary in this particular case um, exponent of number e. And Basically, this is a definition of the um, operation of raising into uh, imaginary um, exponent. At the same time, it's a very convenient way to represent uh, complex uh, with complex numbers to represent uh, sine and cosine. And I'm going to use this formula to prove a very simple elementary trigonometric identity which is a sine and cosine of a sum of two angles. I think the similar problem was presented in the main course, uh, Mass for Teens, but I would like to repeat it again because it's very important to basically feel how complex numbers uh, intimately related to trigonometric functions. So. Using this Euler formula, I'm going to show, not to prove, but to show that sine of x plus y is equal to sine of x times cosine of y plus cosine of x times sine of y. And cosine of x plus y is equal to cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y. So, why did I say that I'm going to show and not to prove? Well, because actually this is a definition and the way how we continued to define the um, 
exponent, uh, in, in case exponent is a complex number, was actually trying to find out, okay, what happens if I will do e times i phi plus uh, psi, for example. And then I was using actually these formulas to prove that this makes sense and it's equal to times e i uh, psi, which is basically the characteristic property of uh, raising into some power. So using the this type of um, uh, law or identities of uh, cosine and sine, we have proven that this makes sense, which means it makes sense to define um, the uh, uh, the raising into some complex power exactly in a similar way to this one. So that's why when I'm trying to say that I would like to illustrate actually that this is actually fine if I'm using Euler's formula as given. So that's why I don't want to say it's proof because that I would have some kind of a logical loop, but it's an illustration. Okay, if it's in the illustration, so let's just do the following. Um, now, e uh, to the power i x plus y, considering this is actually some kind of function which um, satisfies all the regular rules of raising into some power, it's equal to e i x plus plus i y is equal to e i x times e i y equals and now I'm using the uh, Euler's formula for this and for this so uh, e to the power i x is cosine x plus i sine x and e to the power of i i i y is cosine y plus i sine y equals well, let's just multiply. Now, cosine times cosine. This is cosine x, cosine y. Now, then I will use this times this. Now, this is a sine times sine and i square. i square, as we know, i is um, uh, an imaginary unit, so i square is minus 1. That's why I put minus sine x, sine y. I put parentheses around it. Plus. Now I multiply this times this, which will be i times sine x cosine y. Plus this times this would be i. Uh, I will put i around out of the parentheses, uh, and that would be a sine uh, cosine x cosine x and y cosine x sine y. So, what do we have here? On one time, on one hand, this is cosine x plus y plus i sine x plus y. Again, Euler's formula. If this is the um, exponent, then it goes here. This is Euler's formula. And then I, I use the properties of exponential um, uh, manipulation and convert it into this. So I have two complex numbers. Real part should be equal to real part. And imaginary part should be equal to imaginary part. And here is both formulas. Cosine of x plus y is this, which is this. And sine of x plus y is this, which is exactly this. So again, it's not a proof, but it's a good illustration. And if you have forgotten something like this, if you forgot this formula, then perfectly valid to use this type of derivation, which is, again, it's illustration, not the proof. But it's a good way to, if you forgot something, to come up with this formula very easily. One, two, three, four four lines of, of uh, manipulation and, and you, you got it. Because the original definition um, of x plus y and sine of x plus y and cosine and how it's represented 
using uh, sine and cosine of x and y separately. The geometric uh, proof of these formulas is really a little bit cumbersome and you might not really remember it, which is fine. This you don't really have to remember much except one and only one Euler's formula which connects this, this to this, or this to, to this. So Euler's formula is very important for trigonometry and it allows actually to come up with many other formulas relatively easily. So that was my first problem with trigonometric identities. Sine and cosine of sum of two angles. Okay, next. Uh, next on my agenda is tangent and cotangent of sum. Okay, now, now this is actually easy and this is a plain um, manipulation with known facts. So this is equal to, by definition of what is tangent. Tangent is sine divided by cosine. Obviously in all those points where cosine is not equal to zero. Now, now I'm just using the formulas which I have derived just a second ago. So it's sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y divided by cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y. Okay. Sorry. Oh yeah, that's correct. Right. Okay. Now, how can I get from this back to tangent? I would like to use tangent for tangent. So tangent of sum of two angles, I would like to express as tangent of uh, some function of tangent of, of these two um, these two angles. Okay, how can I do it? Well, one of the things is let's divide everything by cosine x and cosine y. What happens? Both numerator and denominator. Well, with denominator it's easy because if you divide this by this you will have 1. If you will have this divided by this you will have sine x divided by cosine x sine y divided by cosine. So that would be basically a tangent x times tangent y, right? Sine divided by cosine and sine divided by cosine y. Now in the numerator, let's just think about it. If I will divide, divide this by this, cosine will cancel out. I will have sine divided by cosine of x. So that's tangent x plus if I divide this by this, my cosine would cancel out and I will have sine y and cosine y. So that would be tangent y. So here is your formula. Tangent of sum of two angles is this. Simple, right? All right, let's go further. Now next is kind of a useful thing in case you have some kind of a equation. If you have an equation, uh, I don't know, a simple one, something like sine x plus 5 cosine y, no, x. We're talking about equation. Uh, equals, I don't know, 1, whatever. Doesn't really matter. It's not easy to come up with solution to this particular equation mm, because this is sine and this is cosine. You, you cannot operate with two different things, basically. Um, you would prefer to have something, one unit, one function, if you wish, of x. So, here is a very interesting property. There is something which is called tangent of half an angle. Apparently, any other trigonometric function can be represented as tangent of, as function of tangent of half an angle, represented in algebraic sense. And I would like to demonstrate it right now. Okay, so um, I will just 
represent sine and cosine, but basically in my uh, notes I have a little bit more detailed. Uh, I have tangent and, and cotangent of some angle also represented uh, with tangent of half an angle. Because again, you can continue this particular complexity and put something else here. Plus tangent of x equals 1 or something like this. So it's different things and with different things it's diffi difficult to operate. But if each one of these can be represented as an algebraic function of tangent of half an angle, which is true, which is, it, it can be done, then you will basically have an equation of Based equa equation of tangent of half an angle. So you can resolve that particular equation. And then, since you know tangent of x divided by 2, you can find out x divided by 2 itself as arctangent, for, exa per, for example, or something like this. So it's very useful in solving some kind of a mixed um, equation where different trigonometric functions participate. And again, I will use only, uh, I think, for a sine and a cosine. I, um, the rest of the uh, expression is in my notes for this lecture. Um, and by the way, I didn't really say that every lecture on unizor.com has video part and, uh, uh, and notes. Notes are like a textbook, basically. So I put something more. And the trivial things uh, I, I will just uh, use only for the notes and they will not present, so they don't really waste much time on this. It's all analogous. So, what I will do is, I will express sine and cosine in terms of tangent of half an angle. Here's how. Okay, let's start with the sine. Sine x. That's the beginning. I mean, obviously, I can represent x as sum of two uh, halves, and which is equal to. Now, let's use the function um, sine uh, of sum of two angles. So it would be sine of x divided by 2 times cosine of x divided by 2 plus cosine times sine. So I can easily put it as 2. OK? Now, I'm going to convert it into tangents, right? So I will um, divide it and multiply by, uh, uh, by cosine square. So it would be 2. If I will divide by cosine square, I will have sine divided by cosine, which is tangent of x divided by 2, times cosine square of x divided by 2. Now, here's very important things. What is 1 plus tangent square of phi? It's 1 plus sine square of phi divided by cosine square of phi equals, let's get to the common denominator. I will have cosine square of phi plus sine square of phi divided by cosine square by phi equals sine square plus cosine square is 1. So I have this, which means that cosine square of phi is equal to 1 over 1 plus tangent square of phi. So instead of this, I can put Instead of this, I put this because of this. All right. This is it. We have expressed sine of x as a function of tangent of x divided by 2. Now, why do we have to go through this whole, whole operations to come up with such a relatively complex formula uh, for a sine? 
for a very simple reason, because the cosine I can also represent as a function of tangent of x uh, over 2. So let me just put this function here. 2 tangent x over 2 divided by 1 plus tangent square x divided by 2. Now let's talk about the cosine. Very similar. Now, cosine x is cosine of x over 2 plus x over 2 equals cosine x over 2 times cosine x over 2, which is cosine square of x to the 2 minus sine square of x to the 2. So cosine times cosine minus sine times sine equals. Do exactly the same thing. Multiply and divide by cosine square. So I will have cosine square of x over 2 times. If I will divide it, that would be 1. And this would be uh, sine square divided by cosine square, which is tan tangent square of x over 2. And again, I will use, instead of this, I will use 1 over 1 plus tangent. So that was equal to uh, 1 minus tangent square x over 2 divided by 1 plus tangent square x over 2. As you see, we have expressed both sine and cosine. Okay? Now, Similarly, you can express tangent of x in terms of tangent of x over 2. And we have already, well, basically done that, because that's easy. We have already expressed tangent uh, of sum of two angles in terms of uh, tangent. Remember? We just did it in the previous. Tangent of x plus y was equal to tangent x plus tangent y divided by 1 minus tangent x times tangent y. Now, instead of x plus y, we will put x over 2 plus x over 2. So here we will have 2 tangent of x over 2. And here we will have tangent square of x over 2. So here is another function. So you see everything in terms all trigonometric functions, the cotangent will be similar. Um, so all trigonometric functions can be expressed as functions of um, tangent of a half of the angle. That's what's very important because now some kind of a mixed equation like I was just saying, something like sine x plus 5 cosine x minus tangent x equals to 1. What do, you, what do you do in this particular case? Well, you express each one of them as functions of tangent of a half an angle, and you will have equation uh, where you can, the equation of one argument only, which is tangent of x over 2. You solve it somehow. Maybe it's solvable, maybe it's not solvable. I don't know. That, that's beside the point. But if it is solvable, solvable, then you will have tangent of x over 2, and then you will have um, the x. OK, so basically these are um, some kind of uh, trigonometric identities, which uh, I believe very useful. And that's why I have decided to spend some time uh, presenting them. All right, so I suggest you to read notes for this lecture. I might have missed something during my lecture. Notes are a little bit more detailed, and uh, I, I don't usually skip uh, any kind of calculations. I just put it as, as they're supposed to be. Um, other than that, uh, well, that's basically it. Um, I wish you luck and uh, have a good time.